One of the most common questions I get is, how much JavaScript should I learn before I jump into React? And the good news is, it's not a whole lot. You can learn it in just this one video. So let's not waste any time, let's get right into it. This is the essential JavaScript syntax and features that I think you need to know so that your life learning React can be a lot easier. So number one, the first feature is an arrow function that sits on a single line. In modern JavaScript, we all use this every day. Uh, but when you're trying to first learn React or JavaScript, this isn't the most intuitive thing to see. So let's unpack what's going on here. Really quick, let me just replace this with the uglier but more obvious code. So this is the same thing as having, you know, function, parentheses, curly brackets, having the one parameter, and then manually typing in the word return. When it's spelled out like this, it takes up way more space in your code and it doesn't look as pretty, but now it's really obvious what's going on. The set berry count function in React is going to call our function that we're giving it. And this also makes it more obvious that you and I are not executing this function immediately. We're just spelling out a function definition and then React can call it at the appropriate time. And when React calls it, ah yes, we have a parameter. So React will give it an argument when it calls it. And then what is this function doing? The, the word return here makes it painfully obvious what it's doing. It's just returning a value. So this is way more intuitive, but now let's write it back the arrow function way. So if you have multiple parameters, you can have parentheses like this. Uh, but if you just have one, precisely one parameter, you don't even need the parentheses wrapping it. Then you have the arrow symbol. And then here's the cool part. You don't need the curly brackets or to drop down to a single line. If you just stay on one line, you don't even need the word return. On a single line, the word return is just implied. Moving on, the next feature is called a ternary operator, and that's this line of code that I'm highlighting right now. Before we talk about the syntax, let me show you the feature. So that's controlling this bit of text here that either says, you cannot make a pie, you need more berries, and then once you have 10 or more berries, it changes conditionally to say, you have enough berries, you can make a pie. So a ternary operator is um, this syntax here. This first portion is true or false, right? It's something that can evaluate to true or false. Then you have a question mark. And after the question mark, you say what you want to do if that condition was true. Then you have a colon. Then you say what you want to happen if the condition was false. So you're going to see this all over the place in your JSX templates when you need to do something uh, with an else condition. As in, it's not just as simple as showing this only if this is true. We also want to account for outputting or doing something if it's not true. So that's called a ternary operator. Now, let's contrast that with down here. If the berry count is nine or larger, only then are we showing the button. If this isn't true, we're not doing anything else. So to accomplish this, we're using the logical and operator, which is just the two ampersands. So again, just to demo that for you, there's no second button here, and then as soon as it gets to 10 or larger, that button appears. Let's talk a little bit about this syntax, because when you're new to coding, for the longest time, oh, I thought the two ampersand symbols were just for if determining like this is true and this is true, like in an if statement, right? Well, yes, that's the most traditional use of this. However, its true nature is that if both of the values are false, it will return the first falsy value. And if both values are true, it will return the final truish value or truesy value. So in this case, if this is true, it's going to return this little bit of JSX that we have on the right here. So this is a really common paradigm you're gonna see in JSX and React. A condition, so first of all, we're in the curly brackets, right? But the, a condition, two ampersands, and then the JSX that you wanna output conditionally. Moving on to our next feature, let's talk about arrays, but specifically uh, array methods called map and filter, but mainly map. So if we scroll down to this example where it says your pets, and you're having a list, right? And I can add to that. So I say purrs loud, add that to the pet collection. It gets added right here. So this is really common in React or just any kind of programming, right? You have an array and you wanna output a list of every item. So the question is how do you handle that in JSX? And the answer is by using map. So in JavaScript, every array has access to the map method. So if you have an array called pets, you can just call map. And now this is combining arrow functions with map. This is getting messy. Well, not messy to type or to look at, but messy to understand when you're new. So when you call map, you have to give it a function. 
This is using an arrow function, and it has parentheses here because when you don't just have precisely one parameter, if you have zero or more than one, you have to have parentheses wrapping your parameters. Then we have our arrow symbol, then the body of the function. Normally there would be no curly brackets, and I guess I misspoke earlier, so let me correct or fix the record here. This is getting returned, this JSX. So the job of this function that we're spelling out here is to return this little bit of JSX. And the reason we don't have to have the word return here is because we don't have curly brackets spelling out uh, the body of our function. We actually don't need these parentheses around the JSX either. You only need parentheses around JSX if you have multiple lines of JSX. So this is, believe me, this is where React gets confusing because you're mixing JSX rules with JavaScript rules. So let's actually spend a minute here to understand this. I can get rid of this wrapping set of parentheses here and then I could just have this sit on a single line like this. So I save, I refresh, everything still works perfectly. Let's talk about what is map actually doing and then let's rewrite this using messy syntax that's actually spelled out so it becomes really intuitive. Map returns a new array based on the array you're calling it on. So it doesn't mutate or change the pets array but it's going to return a brand new array. And then when we give map a function, it's going to call this function once for each item in that collection or array. And then what is this function doing? It's returning a little bit of JSX for each item. So in the new array that's getting built, it'll just be an array with like one piece of JSX, another piece of JSX, another piece of JSX. And then React can handle when it sees a collection or an array of JSX, it automatically like smushes or joins them together and our life is easy. But I'll be honest, when you're new to React and JavaScript, this line of code, you know what it's doing, but like to actually understand the syntax is a bit confusing. So let me do this. Let me grab the list item and let's just rewrite this together really quick. Okay, so this makes sense. Let's fill it in together. We're calling the map method on pets. In these parentheses, we're gonna give it a function. So parentheses, curly brackets. What do we want our function to do? We want it to return a little bit of JSX. And then we need parameters of, yes, the autocomplete is correct, pet comma index. So if you've never seen map before, now this makes more sense, right? You're giving map a function. It's going to call it once for each item. And that's really all it is. The new array will contain whatever you're returning here. So in this case, instead of an array of three strings of text, it'll be an array of three pieces of JSX. And that's what's going to get output. Now, we're not gonna go into it, but you can also use the array method of filter. So this is how I'm setting up this area where it says only pets whose names start with the letter P. So you know, you can purr is loud, princess, right? This shows all of them. This only shows the one that starts with the letter P. This is a great example of how you can loop through items in JSX, and if you need to filter them, it's this easy. So we're calling the filter method on an array. Every array has access to the filter method. You give filter a function. In the body of the function, you want to return either true or false. If you return true, that original item will be included in the new array you're building. If you return far, if you return false, it will be excluded. So that's going to filter. This part will return a new array. And then this is where it gets fun. You can chain together. So because this returns an array and every array has access to these functions, we can call map on that. So this dot, we're just chaining map on the results of filter. It gets really fun. You can get really creative and do a lot with just the built-in methods in JavaScript. Changing gears, let's talk about the next feature. And that is something called the spread operator. So when I'm adding a new animal to the list, tiger, fluffy, when I'm adding those to this existing array, how am I achieving that? Well, in React, you never want to mutate or change the state directly. Instead, you always want to create a new copy and return that. So the spread operator here, these three dots, right? And again, we have our arrow function. So what am I returning as the new value for this piece of state? Square brackets, right? So I'm returning an array but then I'm using the spread operator to basically say, you could think of it like explode into separate pieces the previous value. So however many values there are, right? One, two, three, four, and then comma, just add my new value onto the end of that. So it's a really easy way of creating a new copy of the array and maybe changing it just a little bit. You'll also see this syntax a lot when working with objects. So for example, imagine you had this variable, it's an object with different properties like name, age, role, the most obvious way to give props to a component would be to say like name equals this, age equals this. But you can use the spread operator 
uh, when you have a component and this will give it an object and again sort of like break it into pieces or explode it into the separate pieces. Why am I reaching for a fancy word? Just say spread. It spreads it into its separate pieces. So this is a much more efficient way than spelling out all the props if you know that you want to have each and every property from an object. So you'll see that spread operator a lot in React. Uh, it's just part of JavaScript. You'll see it with arrays and objects. Okay, moving on. Next up, I want to talk about destructuring. So if we move down to this area or on our website, this vehicles area, right? The red car has 10,000 miles. The blue truck has 20,000 miles, so on and so forth. So this area. So I'm passing each prop manually and individually like this. But if we go look at our singular vehicle component, so this area, notice that in my JSX, I'm not saying props.color or props.type or props.miles. I'm just having them, you know, just the name itself. This is because in the parameters for my function, I destructured those. So in other words, instead of saying props here, this is really common. This is like the idiomatic way for the longest time, right? And then you look inside props down in your JSX instead of that. So in your component function definition for the parameters, if you spell out curly brackets, then you can destructure the incoming object. So color, type, miles, and now I can just access those from these names. Neither way is right or wrong, but you're going to see both ways throughout different React components that you work on. And just for a little bit of a learning moment, that destructuring, that's exactly what's going on when you use useState. So when you call useState, it's going to give you back or it's going to return an array with two items in it. And so that's what this syntax is here, right? You have an array and then you're destructuring the two items and giving them names. Cool. Now back down on the vehicles area, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about and that is object property shorthand. So notice here, uh, each item has a log button next to it. And if I open up my dev tools and I click the log button for the red car, down in my console, it logged an object with just color, miles, and a timestamp of the current time when I clicked on it. Right, or if I click the blue truck, it doesn't say truck, but it tells me the color, the miles, and the timestamp. So the whole point of this example, what I'm trying to show you is that when I'm logging this new object to the console, right, curly brackets, here's my object, I'm spelling out which properties I want, right? Timestamp, miles, color. But notice I did not have to say like color colon color or like miles colon miles. The lesson here is that if the property that you're trying to create, if its value is a variable with that exact same matching name, you don't have to say colon and then the value. You can literally just say, you know, that comma, you can just spell out your properties just like this. It's a nice little bit of shorthand. And that actually wraps up this video. That is all of the essential JavaScript syntax and features that I think you need to truly get rolling in React. At this point, uh, now you're not fighting yourself. You can actually focus on React instead of drowning in JavaScript syntax. If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy my full complete React course. You can find a link to it in the description for this video. In that course, we build a simple we build the front end at least for a simple social networking app. You can create posts. There's a chat room. It's a lot of fun. Uh, when you check out to join this course, there's an affordable upsell to get access to my full course catalog. In the full course catalog, there's Figma to browser. There's Laravel. There's MySQL. There's obviously the full React course. There's WordPress development. There's backend or full stack JavaScript with Express and MongoDB and Node. And then there's also a fun AI indie hacking bootcamp. Thank you so much for watching until the very end. I hope you feel like you learned something. And stay tuned for more web development tutorials.